Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Safriya Palace the Saudi Ambassador to the Kingdom, Dr. Abdullah Al Sheikh. His Majesty praised the bilateral deep brotherly relations and the strong cooperation and coordination in all fields. He requested the Ambassador to convey his greetings to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, wishing the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia more progress, prosperity, and security. His Majesty affirmed Bahrain's firm stance towards Saudi Arabia and its support to all measures taken by Saudi Arabia to counter the repeated terrorist acts conducted by the Iranian-backed Houthi militias. He pointed out that uh, these acts violate all international laws, values and principles. His Majesty expressed appreciation to the pioneering role of Saudi Arabia in maintaining the security and stability of the region, in addition to defending uh, the Arab and Islamic nations. His Majesty also discussed with the ambassador topics related to the up coming Arab summit that will be held in Saudi Arabia next month. He wished the country success in organizing the summit that aims to enhance joint Arab action. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghalibiya Palace Chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Al Khalifa in the presence of a number of royal family members. He praised the role of Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid and his contributions to the forward march of the country. He expressed thanks and appreciation to his efforts in developing the government work and his significant role in leading the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs. The Chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness continuous support to the council in which it leads to enhancing its national and Islamic role.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Ghadibiya Palace a number of royal family members and senior officials. His Royal Highness stressed the need for more awareness regarding the recent development witnessed in the region. He stressed the need to maintain national unity, strengthen it and preserve the national gains achieved for the kingdom and its people. He praised the continuous progress witnessed in the country, which reflects the joint efforts exerted to serve the country and its people. He hailed the role of the kingdom's ancestors in building the country, creating a generation with significant values that are considered one of the main parts that form the civilized look of the kingdom. He stressed the importance of preserving the marine wealth of the kingdom of Bahrain and working on its development and benefiting from it in a way that supports the national economy especially in the sectors of food safety, tourism and others. His Royal Highness praised the role of media figures in translating the national issues. He stressed the importance of being careful with words and its impact on societies, especially with the development of means of communication which puts everyone in front of a great responsibility. He praised the role of Saudi Arabia in defending the Arab and Islamic issues under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud, and the Crown Prince, Deputy Premier and Defense Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdulaziz al Saud. He affirmed the kingdom's firm stance towards Saudi Arabia after the recent attack and affirmed support to towards all measures taken by the country to maintain its security and stability. He prayed to Allah Almighty to protect the country. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received today at Ghadaybiya Palace the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry and its members, led by uh, Samar Abdullah Nas. His Royal Highness uh, congratulated them for winning the membership and wished them further success. He highlighted the leading role of the Chamber and its efforts in uh, supporting national economy and development. He affirmed that the coming phase will present a bigger role for the private sector in order to achieve further progress, prosperity and sustainable development. He stressed uh, the importance of developing the economic and investment environment in the kingdom and diversify the economic sectors to achieve the best for the country and its people. He pointed out to the initiatives launched under the reform project of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa comes within the framework of the Economic Vision 2030 and are based on the principles of sustainability, comprehensiveness and justice. His Royal Highness then discussed uh, with his guests a number of topics related to supporting economic activities in the kingdom. His Royal Highness stressed the importance of supporting small and medium enterprises, creating investment opportunities and transforming innovative ideas to successful projects. The chairman of the chamber and its members expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness's continuous support and efforts to enhance the development process and enhance the role of the private sector, affirming the keenness of the chamber to exert all efforts to support the national economy.
The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organization, the RCO, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa received today the Environmental Advisor to the Ajman Government United Arab Emirates UAE, Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Ali bin Rashid Al Naimi on the occasion of his participation in the RCO Forum under the theme Humanitarian Creativity in the presence of the Secretary General of the RCO, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid. His Highness Sheikh Nasser conveyed the greetings of the Honorary President of the RCO, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, to Sheikh Abdul Aziz, hailing the solid fraternal relations between Bahrain and the UAE and the country's efforts to support charity and humanitarian work in various world countries. For his part, Sheikh Abdul Aziz expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for the warm welcome and generous hospitality, commending the directives of His Majesty the King to conduct charity and humanitarian work and the kingdom's pioneering role in the fields inside and outside the country. He also praised His Highness Sheikh Nasser's leadership of charity and humanitarian work through the RCO and the organization's form affirming the inspirations of creativity it provides. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Al Mullah, chaired today the weekly meeting where the Council approved a draft law regarding Bahrain joining mutual administ administrative assistance in tax matters agreement. The Council also approved a draft law regarding Bahrain joining the multilateral agreement between the competent authorities on the automatic exchange of financial account information. The Council then approved a number of draft laws regarding the general budget, an agreement between Bahrain and Russia, amending cooperative societies law and an air service agreement between Bahrain and Malaysia. The Minister of Electricity and Water Affairs, Dr. Abdul Hussein bin Ali Mirza, delivered a speech at the forum held at the American Chamber of Commerce, the ACC, with the participation of U.S. Ambassador to Bahrain, Justin Sabrell, and a number of businessmen from Bahrain and the USA. The minister discussed renewable energy projects in the kingdom, expressing appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for their keenness on encouraging investment in clean energy to achieve sustainable development in the country. The minister also discussed the details of establishing a solar system plant in cooperation with the private sector, hailing the cabinet's approval of the project headed by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and the directives of the coordination committee headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The minister also stated that the cabinet approved the adoption of the National Renewable Energy Plan, which is the NREAP, and a national committee had been formed to implement the initiatives of the plan. He also welcomed the holding the form in Bahrain, affirming the deep-rooted relations between Bahrain and the USA, especially in electricity, water and renewable energy fields. He also expressed thanks and appreciation to the organizers of the forum headed by the president of the ACC, as well as the sponsors, speakers and participants. For their part, the organizers expressed thanks and appreciation to the minister for his positive response and approval to become the main speaker in the forum, wishing him success and the kingdom further development and prosperity. Chief Executive Officer of the Real Estate Regulatory Authority, RIRA, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, said that nine real estate development companies have been licensed today in the field of real estate development, where they reconcile their situation with Law Number 27 of 2017 on the issuance of the Real Estate Sector Regulatory Law. Also, six licenses of advertising for field search licenses were issued as the first of its kind and were handed over to their owners. Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa said that advertising for field research licenses is one of the most important parts of establishing RIRA, in which it affirms to minimize the problems that occur in real estate projects by enabling the real estate developer to conduct field research prior to starting the project in order to obtain a sufficient number of shareholders and buyers to complete this project, thereby preserving the rights of the shareholders and unit purchasers in the project and ensuring that there are no legal and financial consequences.
Bahrain's parliamentary division participated in the UN Permanent Committee's meeting held on the sidelines of the 138th Union Assembly of the International Parliament held in Geneva, Switzerland. The second deputy of the Shura Council, Chairman Jamila Sitman, stated that Bahrain has been committed to the principles and goals of sustainable development, noting the role of the legislative authority as a continuation of the government work to achieve the majority of those goals through integrating them into the national development plan and the consecutive government work programs. The committee adopted its agenda and issued the summary of a session that was held on the sidelines of the previous Assembly's work in St. Petersburg, Russia. The committee discussed sustainable development goals in preparation for the UN High-Level Political Forum 2018, which will discuss the topic Transformation to Sustainable and Flexible Communities. The Kingdom of Bahrain affirms its full support to the United Arab Emirates in all measures taken to protect its rights, security and stability in response to Qatar's irresponsible action towards civil air traffic which follows specific civil routes known to the International Civil Aviation Organization. The Kingdom of Bahrain strongly condemns the reckless approach of two Qatari fighter jets from two civilian aircraft registered in the UAE in the airspace of the Bahrain FIR, affirming that the repetition of these provocative, uh, pro provocative acts reflects a clear determination by the state of Qatar to disregard the safety of civilian aircrafts and air navigation and a violation of relevant international conventions and laws. Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF, will participate with brotherly and friendly countries in the joint military drill Gulf Shield 1, which is considered one of the largest military drills in the region. The BDF combat forces took up their positions for the drill and completed all their combat and administrative preparations. The drill represents a turning point for the technology it uses, as it is considered the most modern military system in the world. The participation of BDF combat forces in the drill comes in implementation of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which stems uh, for His Majesty's keenness on enhancing military cooperation and coordination between Arab Islamic and Gulf Cooperation Council countries. The chairman of the King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, Dr. Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, received the non-resident Swiss ambassador to Bahrain, Maya Tisafi, who was welcomed by the members and board of trustees of the center. More in this report with Shogh Mohammed. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence Board of Trustees welcomed the non-resident Swiss ambassador to Bahrain, Her Excellency Maya Tisafi, during her second official visit to the kingdom. The Swiss delegation were briefed on the history of This is Bahrain and the unique visionary initiatives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the King Hamad Chair in Interfaith Dialogue and Peaceful Coexistence at Sapienza University in Rome, and the Kingdom of Bahrain Declaration, which led to the Royal Order for the formation of the King Hamad Global Center. The ambassador toured the various departments of the King Hamad Global Center's temporary headquarters, the Isa Cultural Center, and discussed the growing importance of the King Hamad Global Center worldwide. I have to say I'm very impressed. It's the first center I visited, a uh, center of coexistence. And I think it's very important to have such a center in a region where you have so many conflicts and war, and to have a center, a cultural center in general, but a center for peaceful cooperation. It's a very strong symbol to the region. This visit marks the beginning of the center's activities in enhancing foreign relations, which works toward achieving its aspirations of globalization and is a clear indication of the rapid spread of the center's residents internationally, coming just over a week since its official formation. Switzerland, of course, has set standards worldwide over many, many years for mutual respect, peaceful coexistence, living in harmony, and maintaining peaceful relations with her neighbors around the world. And from that was born many wonderful things, such as the Geneva Convention, the United Nations, etc. So I think it's uh, particularly wonderful that our first international meeting was with Switzerland. The Swiss ambassador underlined her country's keenness to further cement ties of friendship with Bahrain and praised the diversity, freedom and pluralism characterizing the Bahraini community. Members of the Board of Trustees welcomed Her Excellency and shared their pride at the establishment of the King Hamad Global Center.
I must say that we, have, we have been living here, our temple is here, we are celebrating all our faiths, all our rituals without any problems, without any hindrance in Bahrain. And we have got a lot of support from local people as well as from government officials. And apart from the top of that Al Khalifa ruling family also, they have been supporting us. And we hope that with the establishment of King Hamad Global Center, we will be able to deliver the message to the whole world that Bahrain has been a peaceful, tolerant country since the last 200 years. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence has elevated the prestigious status of Bahrainis as ambassadors of religious freedom and peaceful coexistence. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shog Mohammed. Under the patronage of the Central Bank of Bahrain, ePay Summit 2018 started today dedicated to electronic payments, internet banking technology and applications. More in this report with Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. Bahrain is working very hard to introduce the right mix of policies and regulations for the fintech and retail banking sectors as part of the kingdom's efforts to encourage growth in the fintech industry. It is not an issue of uh, I wish to do it or not. It is be to be or not to be. Uh, you have to go into financial technology. You have to embrace it and you have to embrace it in time. Banking will be, to a great extent, uh, relying on the success of the interaction and embracing the financial technology. The first e-payment summit in Bahrain drives change today and brings together all players in the financial industry to discuss the latest developments in financial technology. Investment is coming from the private sector and we've seen so far you know, the establishment of more than 15 companies in Bahrain doing you know, fintech related uh, services as well as we have uh, introduced the uh, regulatory sandbox and through the regulatory sandbox over a period now of uh, less than a year we managed to approve uh, six companies. No one can develop sustainable strategies, policies and mechanisms and devise practical proposals and solutions to develop the business environment and make it attractive for internal and external investments better than the experts in every related field. We've got a whole array of different stakeholders of which we've got some of the leading payment service providers from Bahrain and also the leading payment service provider for Kuwait. So for us the payments vertical extremely important. We're starting to see that every day and every week there is increased awareness of what does fintech mean for individuals, what does it mean for institutions, why is digitalization and change important, and a venue such as the ePay Summit is, is a great platform from which to further advocate these ideas. Central Bank of Bahrain leading the change for Bahrain and basically the region to transform the services we offer to clients, whether they're consumers or corporates, to begin using e-payments instead of the old traditional cash or paper-driven uh, transactions. The summit sheds light on the best practical applications in the fields of operations and electronic banking, presents practical cases and shares in-depth experiences on a range of topics including innovation, usability and customer adoption, cyber security, e-payments infrastructure and regulation, technological disruption and innovation in the payment landscape. This uh, wallet allows people to pay merchants, to do peer-to-peer uh, uh, -peer, uh, money transfer, and pretty soon we'll be able to do international remittance, uh, managing salaries, as well as doing cash out uh, from all ATMs. So as you can see, by bringing together uh, efforts between the communication service provider and the finance industry, we can launch product fairly quickly in the market. And the good thing is also we have extremely high adoption rates, which, you know, if each player was playing alone, they would not reach to where we are today. The summit is an ideal opportunity to highlight Bahrain's position as a hub for the financial and banking industry in the region. Bahrain is leading the transformation in e-payment, internet banking, technologies and applications and today the e-payment summit 2018 gathers all the experts to shape strategies effectively encouraging growth. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar.